All right, I think we're live. Live, baby. I think we live, y'all. <laughs> I don't know how to all. Uh, I guess I can go in here to uh, go in here to the group and see if it's working. But y'all, if it is working, what's going on? Uh, Brandon Fink, Jose Torres here. We're super excited to uh, to bring you guys uh, this group. This group will be providing massive, massive, massive value. Um, yes. We're not holding anything back, so feel free to ask us any questions while we're doing our trainings. We'll do our best to answer them. But uh, make sure you're specific, too. So since this will be the first, so a lot of people will be watching this on the replay. When you're coming in and asking questions, please make sure that the questions that you guys are asking um, are intelligent and, and well thought out. Like, don't just ask, like, very general questions. We want to be – we want to get very specific with our answers. So – it's very, it's very specific questions. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so it looks like we're good. Let me make sure we got a uh, video. Hey, Jose, talk real quick. Uh, uh, oh. and, and well thought out. Like, don't just ask like very general questions. We want to be, we want to get very specific with our answers. I'm just testing, making sure this is working, guys. That's it's very, it, it's very specific questions. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so it looks like we're good. Let me make sure we got a. Uh, yeah, you're working. All right, y'all. So it looks like we're on about a 30 second uh, time delay from what we're saying now to us answering the question. So please allow uh, 30 seconds for at least a response for your answer. <laughs> but if y'all go ahead, y'all go start a uh, comment below if you guys want to. But what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going over exactly how we find your first winning product. So in the past, especially in the past, like in Alex Becker's group um, and other people's groups, I do my best to uh, to watch the course that they that they teach. And there definitely is, I would say, there's no wrong way to test a product um, other than it can get expensive. And But then, then again, my methods could leave some winners out where their methods use them in. So it's not saying their methods are wrong or my method is the only right way or, you know, nothing like that. It's just that from our experience of spending over a quarter million dollars in Facebook ads testing products, uh, this is what we have found to be the best method. So, uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get, get into this training real quick. You know, David Smith, what's going on, man? We appreciate the love in here. Uh, we're excited to get this group popping for you guys and provide you guys a shit ton of value. So um, in the testing phase, what we like to do is we like come in here and we like to run, um, we have to start off with a PPE campaign. So page um, page post engagements, uh, and what we do is we will run two separate audiences. Okay, so we have a uh, software we use called Facebook Audience Blaster. Um, we'll make sure we drop the link to these tools and softwares that we use uh, for our testing phase inside the comments um, after or even in this post um, after the recording's over and the training's done. But uh, we like to use Facebook Audience Blaster. What that tool allows you to do is you can go to, let's say, if you're in the uh, the dog niche, okay, you can go into PetSmart's fan page, and it lets you get extract emails and phone numbers for people inside of uh, of that page. You know, for people who comment the most or people who share the post, you can like grab their information. And it grabs like three to five percent. So sometimes you have to go through multiple pages, multiple groups. But the thing is, it's a, it's a really cool tool. You can already find engaged Facebook users inside those groups. So that that audience, we will make a one percent lookalike out of. That usually works really well. And we will also um, do what's called a flex targeting audience. And with a flex targeting audience, what we like to do is let's do a dog example again. Um, we will try to use four flexes. So the first one would be like dogs. We'll go super, super um, broad. general. Yeah, broad, very broad. Um, the next one will be online shopping. That's also very broad. So we're saying that they must, so it's, it's an and. So flexing essentially is not adding them all or grouping them together, but we're like flexing them out, right? So we'll we'll do that, and when you're doing this, you want to try to you want to try to like keep it as least amount of pages as possible, and we try to get to around four hundred thousand to eight hundred thousand people. Um, so we would say you know dogs, online shopping. Um, the third one would be something like uh, 
<laughs> yeah, like pet specific, like passionate pages. So um, not like PetSmart, but more like a, a fan page or maybe a magazine or something, right? And then the fourth one we do is like places that people are shopping. So uh, I actually got this from a guy named uh, Tristan. Um, he actually kind of broke this down pretty well. So I'm going to use his example he taught me was when you're um, when you're flexing this last category, this is like the most important category because this is places people are already shopping. So, for example, let's say um, you wouldn't want to target pedigree because uh, everyone has to buy their dog dog food or their dog dies. Right. You want to find something more passionate, like maybe like BarkBox or like a monthly subscription service to where PetSmart, because PetSmart, they sell accessories for dogs. So you want to find the more passionate store for your niche you can find the flex is going to be the best. Okay. So that as far as targeting goes, we'll do $6 a day. Let me kind of go into our notes here. We'll do $6 a day. Um, 12 a.m. news feed and suggested videos only because we only test videos. Um, and we do $6 a day there. Someone had a question. What do you mean online shopping? Like the actual behavior? Um, I think it's an interest. I'm not shopping. Might be an interest. It's like 200 some million people. It's huge. Yeah. It's, it, it'll it'll very limitedly uh, narrow down your targeting. And then, as far as the video, I'm gonna let Jose kind of explain to you guys the videos we use because he does he handles the video side of things here. So uh, Jose you can go ahead and teach him the the video aspect. All right. So when it comes ad. to the videos, um, basically well, the actual ad, the ad copy in general. The ad copy, okay. So when it comes to the ad copy of the video, the picture, I mean, uh, we only post videos. But when it comes to the ad copy, we generally want to start out with the question. Like, for example, are they passionate for? for he, he gave an example: dogs. Um, are you a pet owner? Do you love your dog? Do you love dogs? You know, use that question mark. Use that. Use that question. You know, and then say, dog owners are going crazy over this product. Right? You, you know, kind of saying that everyone's going crazy. They're like, oh, everyone's loving this product. I need to buy it too. You know, it gives that. It gives, it gives that feel. And then you say um, kind of like um, a little benefit, like, oh, you do a little benefit. And then you say, um, get get a, get 50% off with free shipping. And then you say limited, limited, uh, what was it? Limited stock remaining, right? So there's a, there's a um, you're having scarcity, right? Scarcity. So you're injecting scarcity. You're like, oh, shit, 50% off, free shipping. And it's limited, you know, it's limited. So I was like, oh, shit, I need to buy this right now. So you have that. And at the end, you have the call to action, which is claim yours here. You have the link, either a Billy link or a Google link. One of those, either, either either of those two work. And that's it. Very simple. And um, then we test that short, short, short copy. And then we also test a, like, long form copy. So when it comes to long form copy, um, I have this written down right here because I usually forget. But you want to have, like, grab their attention. And then you want to like identify the problem, whatever you're selling, identify the problem, you know, like um, due to due to the fact that dog owners are not buying these, um, maybe like a, a light up leash in the night, your dog can go missing. So this is going to prevent from your dog going missing or, you know, you're going to know where he's at all times. And then that's the solution. And they have some social proof, like everyone is going crazy with this product. Um, and then you make the offer, you know, um, get 50% off with, with, uh, Free shipping, limited, limited, um, limited stock available, and then you say, "Warning: Sell ends in however how many days you want to do," and then you end it with a reminder. I mean, with the uh, code action, buy it here. So that's a little bit more longer. You want to have more benefits about it too in the middle, and uh, we'll be showing you guys either in this video or, or in another video on how to write that down. I'll do that for you guys. Yep. What about so you? Well, so what about so here? I'm gonna put this up on the screen. Hopefully, you guys can see this here. So what about uh, Daniel? Yeah, go ahead, bro. I find it hard to write copy for apparel. When it comes to the T-shirt, you always want to do something that someone's passionate about. You know, they want to show it off. Like, um, show your friends your passion about dogs. Show your friends your passion about video games. Show your friends about passion about um, working out. You know, like. You know, it's all about what other people think about them. It's not really, you know, that's that's what people buy things. They feel superior or feel like, you know, so they can let other people know about their passions. So, if, yep. so that's your question. Figure out the passion and kind of emphasize the goal around that. You know, don't sell the shirt. Sell the passion of the shirt. 
Great, great question there. So, and so, and then to kind of break this down, uh, as at the business level, uh, we use two softwares. Like I said, we'll put the links to these things here. We actually have a uh, affiliate link with Clipman where I think you can get a trial or at least not to pay my, like, it's like a really cheap deal. So I'll make sure we grab that for you guys. Camtasia, um, Camtasia is a professional video editing software that we use, that we have, we have two right now, two full-time video editors that work for our company. Um, and we'll have them make us the professional videos and Clipman, something that, you know, Jose, myself, or our other digital marketer can go in there and make yourself. It's a, it's a really easy software to use starting off. So, you know, maybe starting off, you guys would just run, uh, you guys want to do Camtasia or have a professional video made until your product is proven to be a winning product. However, we found that by doing this, um, we can do this a lot more cost effective than someone starting off can because we have this person working full time for us. Whereas if you guys go to try to get a freelancer to do this, um, you got to teach them. You know, it, it takes a while. So I would just recommend starting off, use Clipman and maybe use these two different audiences in your ad set. So what this would look like is you would make a campaign PPE conversion, six dollars a day per audience here. And then you would just like, so your first audience, your first ad, you use your Clipman video. And then inside the ad set level, you could just duplicate this ad set um, and change the audience up. And then this um, video will remain the same. Uh, a very crucial part to the success of your PPE campaign, though, is if you're going to use that method, make sure you guys go into your Facebook ad account to your page post and grab that page post ID. So make sure you're running traffic to both of those uh, to the same ad. Because what happens when you go on the Facebook and you duplicate your ad set? It's just gonna you're gonna it's gonna make you two separate ads, but they're gonna be the same thing. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're promoting the same exact ad. That way you're driving double the engagement to the ad, double the social proof. So when it comes time to scaling, if you get there, um, all that social proof is already there. So I'm gonna go. Through, let's go ahead and go through here and answer some of these questions. So we have Josh. Josh says, "Do you suggest?" intersecting multiple niches for print on demand um and how would you target how would you target dogs example dogs plus a favorite tv series um how was it you understand that question maybe i'm having a hard time okay okay so niches do you mean like interest type of niches like you know dogs and TV show series, or can you like be more specific with your question, please? Do you mind Scooby Doo? Like Scooby Doo is a dog in a TV show. <laughs> yeah, if you can be a little more specific with that question, we'll get back to you on that, Josh. Um, and then Daniel says, "Thanks, I'll try some new copy out this week." Yeah. So yeah. copy, copy's key, guys. Copy's really key. There's a book. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a YouTube video on our YouTube channel. It's a top five books we recommend. I highly recommend you guys jumping over to our YouTube channel, Ecompreneurs. We break down the most important books. That uh, that you it, oh, you have to have like you have to have to be successful, um, in this industry. Go check it out. It's Facebook just type in ecompreneurs. You'll see the same logo that's right here on our video, and we have links to all the books below. So um, you know, we do make a little bit of affiliate commission off of it, but you know, uh, you don't, you have to pay no more for it, and it allows us to make more free content like this for you guys. So it's books that you know Jose and I both own. Um. And we re actually reference most of those every day. So, okay. So now that we have our our fire ass ad copy, our videos made, uh, what you're going to do here is we're going to let our ads run. So we're, say, for example, right now we're making our ad. It's 917 at night where I live. Um, I would schedule this ad to launch tomorrow at midnight. So in about, you know, three hours, my ad would launch. And what we're going to do is we're going to let that ad run for a whole day okay like 24 hours if we get four unique link clicks so i should take you guys into one of our ad accounts here and show you what i mean by unique link clicks because most people don't understand what i'm talking about when you get to here i'll uh, let this load up real quick i'm gonna load this up on a, a different screen that way i can pull up all the goodies for you guys and break it down. Um, in the meantime, Jose, if there's any questions, if you, you want to, if you can answer them, I think there are any questions though. 
So yeah, if y'all have any questions, y'all feel free to drop the questions and we'll be answering questions as we go. Yeah. Through this. I don't understand the doubling up up yet. Doubling. Like you multiply the ad. So Elizabeth, I got I gotta pull up on the screen for him. So every time we're on these questions, I can pull it up on the screen. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. All right, so let's see here. TK1. When it comes to like Dolan, yeah, you're basically just multiplying it. Okay, I don't understand the doubling up of the ad. Elizabeth, so what we're doing here is what we're doing is we're using the same ad, okay? But we're using two different audiences. So we're giving it we're we're giving two different audiences a shot at the same ad. Um and the doubling up of the ad, um, I can show you that too real quick. Kind of know that's kind of confusing as well. So two audiences, audiences, two audiences, one um creative, one video. Uh each audience is different. So you're testing. I think what she's talking about is like the page post ID. Oh, the page post ID. Like she, don't, she doesn't understand how to double up the oh. ad to make sure it's one ad. How, oh, basically how to connect them to that one single creative is what she's asking. Yeah. Oh, she's asking. Sorry about that. No, nah, I was confused too. So letting you just load up. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to take a couple more questions while this loads up for Elizabeth. And let's see what we got. So I think I just finished reading a copy that sells by Ray Edwards. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she meant. Page pose ID. So I can just, um, just show her. Um, yeah. So Joshua said, "Yes." So example, I'm making a design for Valentine's dog niche plus Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, this is confusing, bro. <laughs> so for example, I'm making designs for Valentine's dog niche plus Fifty Shades of Grey. So what you're saying is that you're making one shirt. I think I think it'll be off the rip. I think you're just going too broad, bro. <laughs> that sounds like it's too, gonna be too, like val- So you're making an ad for people who like Valentine's Day, dogs, and Fifty Shades of Grey. So for example, that's like a, a fifty thousand person audience. Like you can't scale that shit. Um, I'm about you want to how you have find success in ecom is you want to find a product that a lot of people would buy, but that you can scale down very specifically to like four hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand people. And you will never use this audience that you use originally. You're going to eventually switch over to lookalike audiences, um, which is like way advanced down here. But these two audiences, 100%, will probably not be profitable. When we're doing our, our testing, we're not looking to make profit. We lose money testing. We understand we're going to lose money testing, but we, we lose that money testing so we can make profit while we're scaling. Hey, what's up, Alex? So... Um, Elizabeth, I'm still waiting for this to pull up. I think it's being slow because I'm hosting uh, Jose and me and sharing my screen. So as soon as our ad manager pulls up, um, or even if maybe I can get Power Editor to pull up a little easier sometimes. So, okay, let's go back over here. So making designs for, yeah. So, Josh, I'm still confused with what you're saying there, bro. So uh, you said you you said you duplicated that. Yeah, Elizabeth, I got you. Page post, greetings, gentlemen and ladies. What's up, Alex? So I'm going to go back to... Since we have Elizabeth opened right here, this is not loading up here. <laughs> so, I, Elizabeth, while this loads up, I'm going to continue the training, and I'll go back to the power editor when it doesn't want to be slow. So, remember, now we're, we're 24 hours through, and what we're looking for here is we're looking for unique link clicks. Okay, so if it has four unique link clicks, then we're going to keep it running. If it has less than four unique link clicks, then we're going to kill the ad set. So, after 24 hours... If essentially four people have not visited our page, then we're going to kill it. Okay, so this is a good thing because now you've only spent $12. So if you've run both, so you have two different ads we're looking at, okay? So if this ad set right here doesn't have six unique link clicks, uh, four unique link clicks, we kill it. If this one, so for example, this one had three unique link clicks and this one had four, then we would just kill this one, okay? But that's how that works. So if both of these only have like one or two clicks each, the worst case scenario, you spent $12. This is not going to be a winning product, more than likely. So what, what Jose and I did was we literally spent, uh, I would say like, we spent like two days, bro, like went, going back through all of our campaigns we've ever ran that were uh, profitable and winning products. 
and we look back to day one and we notice that all was well, something that all these things had in common day one day two and day three and we we made these uh parameters okay and uh we also masterminded with some other econ guys um and found that some of these guys are doing similar things like us um and you know we implemented their system and combined it with our knowledge and it's been working very very well for us um yeah so yeah so after 24 hours if it, if uh either one of the ad sets does not have four we kill it if not we move on after 48 hours it gets a little more complex so now the ad should be optimizing for ppe campaigns facebook should be doing its job it should kind of have a better understanding of the individual that you are looking for because remember we're not optimizing for link clicks we're optimizing for engagements at this point in time we'll have enough engagements for, for facebook to use the algorithm to get us more engagements and more engagements link leads to more link clicks if the per people you are showing your ad to is relevant if your product is relevant to the people showing your ad to so at this point, if we have one sale, we resume it no matter what. It can have five link clicks. If it has a sale, we're going to resume it. If it does not have a sale, we, um, if it has a less than 15 unique link clicks, we're going to kill it. So if either one of these ad sets has less than 15 unique link clicks, you're going to, you're going to immediately kill it. And if we have over 15 link clicks um, and no sales, then we're going to improve the copy on our funnel. So uh, a little different thing that Jose and I do that we found huge success with is we use click funnels. We do not drive any traffic to our Shopify store. However, you you can use this method for either or, but we just find funnels converts like three times better. <laughs> but so we would go, we would improve the copy on our landing page on our funnel. Uh, we would drop the price down. Maybe if we're selling, let's say a fifteen dollar necklace, we would drop it down to like twelve ninety nine. Um, and then we would let it run for another day. Okay, so that's after two days. Now, after three days, if we have one sale, we resume it. If we have no sales, we kill it. It's that simple. Okay, so worst case scenario here, you're going to spend $12, $24, $36 testing this product. If you have no sales after $36 spent, you kill everything. You know, so you're, you, we usually spend, I would say, um, uh, around $20 testing your product. OK, and it takes a lot of work to set a product up, but you'll see once you start, uh, as we keep doing more live trainings and more live trainings, you'll see that uh, we actually, you know, we do find a lot of winning products. We actually find about when we use our system with funnels and click funnels and stuff like that, we find about one in 10 products we test um, are profitable products and maybe one in 15 to 20 are like winning products where you can like really scale them. So when I would say I, um, Profitable means like you might make a hundred dollars a day profit. When I say winning, I mean like you can make a thousand dollars a day profit or more. So um, <clears throat> then we would get to the last day, which is day four. At this point, if you would never make it to day four if you did not have a purchase, um, we would uh, basically if it has two sales, if that one ad set has two sales, then we would increase the budget. We would duplicate it um, to a to a lead or in Shopify's case, you would duplicate it to a add to cart objective and you would let it run for 48 hours and you would increase the original um, budget to $12 a day. And we'll see power is still not loading. <laughs> um, come on, power. Editor. So I guess we'll go ahead and take a couple of questions real quick. Uh, since we kind of just went over the kind of the first four days and make sure that you guys completely understand what you guys are supposed to do during these first four days. And um, and Elizabeth, we are going to get to you, okay? And I'm going to show you guys what I mean by unique link clicks as well. Um, assuming, here we go. Actually, it's coming up. So I'll let that come up over here on this other screen and I'll break it out while Jose is answering some questions for you guys. Shoot, shoot the questions. Okay, so Alex said, what do you think about Market Hero? That's you can answer that. It's more more <laughs> Yeah, I um I don't use Market Hero. Um, but I would use Market Hero. So um 
Yeah, I remember in that group, I was paid by Alex Becker, right? So when I'm doing that, obviously, I'm not going to talk down his stuff. Um, and now that I'm not being paid by Alex Becker anymore, I'm still not going to talk down his stuff because I like Market Hero. Market Hero is a good platform to use. Uh, starting off, I definitely think there are cheaper options you could use, such as um, uh, like MailChimp, AWeber, um, stuff like that. Mail, MailChimp, MailChimp's probably the most... Uh, Jose, you have any opinions on the best one? Like to use? Simple, easy to use. It, you see the setup, quick. Um, it's very basic. It, 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 it's straight to the point. That's, that's what I like about MailChimp, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it's been in the cards. It has um, more sequences. Yeah. Market here is going to be much more advanced than MailChimp. Yeah, it's more advanced, 100%. It's more advanced. You're going to make more money with it. But if you're not doing any sales yet, then there's no need to to spend a hundred dollars on an email software off the rip. And yes, Alex, we are recording this. So if you're driving down the road, bro, you ain't gotta waste all that data. You can come back to this. Um, but you know, to get any questions, they need to be on the live. Um, will we get that map out, David? Will will we get that map out? Not sure what that means, bro. Yeah, be more specific, David. Yeah, be more specific. Oh, uh, hey, well, I'll post my shirt in the group later. <laughs> All right, yeah, Josh, that's going to be a good idea, bro. Yeah. Post that in the group later so we can see what the hell you're talking about. Now, I'm still trying to get Power Editor to load over here. It's just ridiculous, man. But um, so do y'all, so before we move forward, like I said, do we have any more questions about um, this right here? Between the first four days, is there any questions about what you guys do? between day one and day four. I'm gonna give about 30 seconds before I move forward. And I'm gonna keep over here trying to get Power Editor to work on this other computer. <laughs> so we have a question right here. Um, show. So is there no sale on the first day but unique link clicks we continue to add? Yeah, so on the first day, the only thing you're looking for is to see if it got four unique link clicks or not. Yo, Jose, you know what I think, I think is fucking with me, bro? It's like me and you are like in real time, and they're like 30 seconds behind me. I think that's why I'm like fucked up in the head right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm watching I'm watching 30 seconds behind. I don't know, anyway. Yeah, so if there's four unique link clicks, you're going to resume it. If there's So if you have four, you resume it. If you have three, you kill it. If you have five, you resume it. If you have six, you resume it. The sales are not a uh, factor here. Nothing's a factor here except for link clicks. But um, they asked about the flow chart. If we're going to map that out for them. Oh yeah, I mean it's right here, bro. So you can just go right to this video, and it'll be right here for you. Uh, this is going to be recorded, so you guys can go back to this map, uh, to this chart anytime. I recommend you guys like watch this video like probably twenty times because. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in, and you're gonna be uh, referencing this like every day as you guys are testing products. Yeah. Where do you shop for winning products? Where do you shop for winning products? I think. Do you mean, about- Alex? Do you mean what? How we find our winning products, and will you upload the image of the method page? Others, we we will not be uploading the. Uh, we will not be sharing this file to the group. Uh, A, it's not complete. Um, and B is the blueprint for our business. And, um, like this is like a kind of like almost like patented, I'd say. And we have like a lot of like random like company information and shit over here that we just can't share with you guys. So, but you know, we will be going over this entire chart through all of our live trainings in the future. So you guys will know everything that's on here. Just gotta be a little patient. Just be a little patient. If you guys are scaling right now, you guys don't need to know this shit anyway. You guys need to be learning how to find your first winning product. That's going to be, that's the most important thing in e com. Once you find your first winning product, you can make money. But it's finding that first winning product that's so, um, that's tough. That's why we like to start. That's why we're starting this whole live training series off with um, how to find your first winning product. Um, and Al, as far as where we find your first winning product, um, we have a product research team. But if I was going to go find my first winning product, um, well, that's a whole other video in itself. So maybe we can save that for another day, uh, for another training, actually. Actually, uh, I'm going to write that down so we can kind of take a poll on that. Because actually, if you go to Alice Baker's YouTube channel, 
Yeah, if you go to Alice Becker's YouTube channel and you find our videos on there, we did a rec- uh, we did a training for Becker. We go exactly how we find our products. It's like an hour long. That's why I don't want to uh, do that on this call. Um, I think that dude that's why the map made the diagram. Before we get the diagram, I already covered that. Um, I want to blow up with you guys for sure, bro. We already blown up though. Um, all right, so we got. We got a good little stream going. All right, so it looks like there's no questions on this process, so we're going to we'll keep going into it. So um, after four days, right, there's two things. So let's say, for example, you have uh, one, you know, one sale, but, you know, no, you have no more sales. It's still unprofitable because at this point, your ad, uh, your ad set has spent $24, okay? Um, more than likely, you don't have a $24 profit margin built into your product. So it's still going to be unprofitable at this point. So if it's profitable, this is going to be very rare. And when this happens, it's going to be a good thing. Um, but it's so, you know, if you have two sales, pretty much you're good to go. If you have one, you want to really look at the engagement. You want to look at your CPM. And I really wish my Facebook was, was working right now so I could show you guys this. Um, but it's just not. So. When you go into your ads manager, I'm going to try to explain this to you guys the best I can verbally. You go into your ads manager and you go into your ad set level. Um, on the ad, at the ad level, like where you click the little check mark box, you'll see a little graph. It'll say like view chart. You can click on that view chart button. And at the bottom left, you'll say custom. And you can customize your CPM. So you'll say you want to see how your CPM has performed since day one to day four. So essentially, if your CPM it's trending downwards on that chart. Um, that's when you would continue running this ad. If your CPM as like, you know, went down day one, shot back up day two, and it's trending upwards, that's when you kill this. But, you know, nine times out of 10, your CPM will be trending downwards. Um, so like nine times out of 10, if, as long as you have one sale, you're going to continue your ad. But the thing is like, you don't want to come over here and waste $40 because this is a $40 test. You're you're gonna get yourself into about a hundred dollars right here. So you don't want to like waste a hundred dollars um, <laughs> on an ad that's obviously like this not gonna work. And the way you can tell that is just go into your view charts, uh, clicking the custom button. You'll see it there, and picking CPM at the, like the top middle left, and you can see your CPM trend from day one to day four, and just see how it trends. So hopefully that's not too confusing, but uh. Like I said, I can't. my Facebook uh, is not loading up. Oh, here we go. Actually, here it goes. So I can show you guys what I'm talking about here. So we actually um we have a, a little course we're coming out with here soon about how we um you know we use click funnels for our business, and this is actually the campaigns we're running in that course. So we got to show you guys. Um, we actually like built this campaign live, and I built all these campaigns live. So we have this one PPE campaign right here. So what I'll do is I'm gonna come over here to a, um, not to a lifetime, but to maybe like the last, the last week. I'm gonna find this PPE campaign for you guys and show you what I'm talking about. So you'll click right here. So this is going over right here, day four, whether or not we're gonna be taking this ad and killing it, or we're going to try to scale it. Okay. To, this is called our test scale. Like this is our testing scaling phase. So right here, we're going to go to view charts, okay? You're going to come down over here if it loads. I'm kind of impatient, y'all, so I'm sorry for being impatient. I'm used to Facebook just like. Yo, um, Brandon, take off that that question. It's been in there for like a minute. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, so Alex said, um, do you have a one-on-one coaching program? Why is those up? Do you have a one-on-one coaching program? Um, not at this time. Not at this time. We we don't do we don't offer one-on-one coaching anymore. We used to. Um you know, it, it's if if we do do it, it's gonna be very expensive. Um, uh, because our time our time is is worth a lot of money. So that's why we do these kind of we like to give back as much as we can. That's why we do these live calls, but our time inside of our business has such a high ROI right now 
that we need to leverage all the time that we have inside our business. But um, we may have a coaching program in the future, but uh, not not at the moment. You work with high risk merchant accounts and products? No, no, <laughs> no, nah, bro. Guard your merchant account with your life. You don't want to lose that. Don't run. Like, so, for example, um, I think Tristan, Tristan's a guy I talked to that said this. Um, uh, he's basically was saying if if it's a healthcare product, like you don't want to be selling shit that can like get someone like that can get you a lawsuit. Like uh, uh, one example of what was it, like a, a rock climbing repelling gear like dollars if you're if your little cheap chinese uh repelling harness breaks with someone and kills them like how are you gonna feel about that shit when you could just just as easily uh, try to sell someone a lamp or something yeah yeah and then um i think he also said nothing that's edible obviously and if you're selling some electronic stuff make sure you buy it first before you scale it buy the electronic piece or whatever it is a shirt maybe and yeah. test it out for yourself if you like it if, like, if the electronic flies good if it's like a a drone, uh, then you can scale the product. If not, don't do it. Because I mean, I had many friends that that had a, all their customers um, complain about their T-shirt because it wasn't well. It was it was too small. It was an, it was a Asian size, so they lost a lot of money due to that. So you know, always double check before yeah. you scale. I, I recommend too if you're gonna do T-shirts and stuff, uh, use a print-on-demand service like like um, Interest Print or like we use Guten Guten dot com. Um, Use someone like you know, use like Amer- like American company, so it's like the right sizes. Because, like Jose said, you'll be selling like you'll sell a bunch of shirts, and then you'll get like a hundred percent refund rate. And then not only will you make no money, and you'll lose a bunch of money on ads, but you also get your mer- merchant account shut down. Yeah. So. And. And this shit's not loading, man. I don't know what's going on. This is aggravating. Do you have any high end products? Yeah, we sell digital products. So our, our high-end products at the moment, we never sold any physical high-end products. Um, we sell like we do sell a hundred dollar product, so I guess that might be considered high end, but uh you know, I have buddies that sell sixteen thousand dollar products. So compared to my perspective of high end products, no. But if a hundred dollars is a high end product, then yes. <laughs> I think when it comes to like high end products, um, you know, that's when the upselling comes in. So basically, you start with something small, and then you upsell them. You lead, you, um, lead towards, you lead towards a high end product. For example, a Canva painting that costs eighty dollars, hundred bucks. Something that you most likely be able to sell, but on an upsell or downsell. That's what we had success success with. Yeah. So, for example, if um, we're selling a like one of the things we're selling is a globe necklace, right? So for the globe necklace, you can upsell them higher ticket things like, um, like a like a um, picture of the world on a Canva, like those they said for like eighty bucks. You can grab it off of AliExpress for like fifteen bucks. So you can sell like those higher tickets there. Also, what what works really well for our company is buy to inside of our funnels. Is um actually let me see if I can, I even pull up. Pull up the map. Mm-hmm. Pull up. Pull up. Yeah. I guess we're gonna keep rolling on because I'm trying to show you guys what I mean by this, but it's not wanting to work. This, but this is a little chart icon you click on, and then you guys will see down here where I'm at. It'll say custom up here. You'll click on CPM. You'll just click on a little drop down and click CPM, and you can see that it's trending downwards up here. So let's go ahead and continue on the training, guys. So once we get to that point and you are confident kind of in your product, we're going to duplicate it from PPE. So you can go into Power Editor at this point, and not everyone has this feature inside of their ad account um we do all of our accounts do it's rolling out to everyone's account right now but uh you would go into power editor you would uh click on your campaign and you would duplicate the i wish i could show you guys this but uh facebook's not wanting to work i guess it doesn't want you to face do a facebook live and do facebook ads at the same time but um yeah you you'll, you'll click on there you'll duplicate it to uh, you'll change it to a conversion. So it'll tell you on the campaign level, you want to change it to conversions. If it asks you for your campaign objective, it'll say purchases, but at the ad set level, you're going to choose add to cart. If you're using Shopify, if you're using click funnels, um, you'll use a lead objective and, um, we can do a, a training later on or like inside of our course, we show you guys how to, 
to code in the lead objective into your funnel. But um, so for for Shopify purposes, which I'm sure most of you guys are on, you guys would just duplicate it from PPE to add to cart, twenty dollars a day, let it run for forty eight hours, um, and then it's, it's simple. If if it was profitable after you spent forty bucks, then you go this way. If it wasn't profitable, then you go this way, <laughs> and um, uh, I would say like what fifty percent of the time it'll be profitable, fifty percent of the time it won't be profitable. Um, how you can really get into spending a lot of money testing a product is if it goes this way and this doesn't work. But um, but it's good at the same time though because you get to build more data for your product. So either way is fine. But you know, literally, if it's like let's say for example, you spent forty dollars, um, and you had sixty dollars in sales and you had twenty uh thirty dollars in product cost, so you lost ten bucks. Uh, to me, that that's close enough, right? That's close enough for me to say okay. That was profitable. <laughs> so profitable is like to me. I'm, I'm always like on the edge. I want to like try to push it because I'm a very aggressive. Uh, you guys, Jose, and like even uh, guys that work with us, like they're like, "Brian, you spent way too much fucking money, bro." But I'm very <laughs> aggressive in my scaling. <laughs> very, very aggressive in my scaling. So you guys can go either way. It doesn't matter at that point. If it's like ten dollars negative, then you can either decide to go this way or that way. But if it's like a clear, like we only got like one sale. And it's like super negative, then you would go this way. If it was uh, obviously positive, then you'd obviously go this way. So uh, we're going to assume that the ad was profitable, okay? So this is where it gets a little, uh, a little. Expensive. Let's see if we have any questions on that. You have any, you have any questions? So uh, Simon asked, "Did you go over interest groups yet?" Uh, yes, Simon, we did. So if you go back when we finish this up, we'll uh, put this in a group for you guys to go back on. Uh, Alex. Said, I know, I know your time is money, but if you're interested in taking on a student to expand business, uh, get a residual, hit me up afterwards. All right, Alex, yeah, man, to be honest, man, we don't have, we're not probably having time for um, any other businesses, bro. We have, uh, we're launching like three different uh, software businesses this year. So we're not going to really have time for uh, for side stuff, but I would appreciate the offer. Uh, and guys, like, this is, uh, um, this is what we're in here to do. We're not in here to, you know, take you guys on as one-on-one students or, um, you know, we will be offering courses and stuff that we provide at a higher level of learnings um, in the future. But we're not in here to, like, try to get money from you guys. We're literally in here to provide as much value as possible. And uh, that's what this is. So, you know, to be as uh, polite as I can be, I'm very blunt sometimes. Um, we're not interested in, in uh, working on other business ventures or um, stuff like that with you guys. But uh, we would love to, to come in here and answer your questions every week on these live trainings. So um, hopefully that hopefully that helps out there. But yeah, so it looks like we don't have any questions as far as that goes because it's pretty simple. So after we decide that it was profitable, we're going to then duplicate the add to cart. So we're going to go back in the power editor um, and we're going to duplicate the add to cart campaign to a purchase campaign. And then at the ad set level, okay, Meaning right here, so here's the campaign level. Here's the ad set level. We would come into this ad set and we would duplicate this ad set right here two more times, okay? So that's how we would do that. And that's how you get to have three ad sets. And we're gonna do these each at $40 a day. Once again, we're gonna be making sure that we're running all the traffic to these four, uh, three ad sets or to these three ad sets to that one same ad. Um, and we're going to schedule any, – anytime we do any of these duplications, we're always starting these at midnight, okay? Um, one thing, too, here is we want to go to a one-day click. So most people teach seven-day clicks, um, and we have found that when you're testing your product, one-day click works best. When you are scaling your product, seven-day click works best. Um, however, you can do whatever you want to do because – we haven't seen that much of a difference, but I have noticed that myself. Um, and what you're telling, what you're really trying to figure out is if you can go to your, uh, this is once again, a very advanced uh, kind of thing to tell you guys, but uh, most of the time you won't have the data in this, but if you go to analytics.facebook.com, you can go to your revenue and you can see on there the average amount of time that it takes for a customer to purchase from your business. And generally in e we deal with, um, you know, 
we deal with emotional buys. So meaning that they're going to buy on the first visit, especially lower ticket items under $50. They're 100% going to buy on the first visit or they're probably not going to purchase from you. Um, so that's why we find that one day click works best because we're telling Facebook that we're looking for people who are, who are going to want to convert the first day they click. Um, and while it does, um, you know, make it harder for your learning phase on Facebook, we still have found it to be more, I've had more success using it in the testing phase. Okay. So, uh, we always have to deal with that. Uh, everyone kind of always objects to that all the time. <laughs> so and then you have your, your three ad sets, $40 a day. We're going to run this at midnight. Um, let's see if I have any more notes in here that I'm not remembering. Yeah. Purchase. Uh, we use custom conversions. That's going to be a whole other training. When we get to this point, we switch over to custom conversions. Um, how, however, like I said, that's it's kind of more advanced. You guys can use a purchase objective. It'll do fine. Uh, this will just work a little better. Um, so then at 12 hours, the next day, when we're running these uh, ads, we're going to pause the least performing ad set at 12 p.m. or when $20 is spent. Sometimes it takes Facebook a little bit of time to spend your money, so you might have to go like wait till like three to four p.m. before it spends twenty dollars. But at that point, it's usually very easy to go into Facebook and tell which was the least performing ad set. So what I usually do is there's three things I'll look at. I'll look at the click through rate. I'll look obviously if, if two have a purchase and one doesn't, it makes it a very clear answer for you. But it's not always that easy and clear. I'll look at the click through rate. I'll look at the cost per click and the CPM. Okay. So whichever ad is worse in those categories, and usually you'll notice like one ad has a super has a much higher CPM than the other two. That's instant kill. Okay, CPM means cost per milli, uh, which translates to cost per thousand people reached. So your cost that's that's a very important factor when it comes to um, conversion ads. Mm -hmm. So that's those are the three factors I look at there, and then after twenty four hours. If it's profitable, kill it. If it's not profitable, you continue to run it. And um, so if both ads, both ad sets continue to be profitable, then you let them both run. If uh, one ad set is profitable and the other one's not, you kill it. And now you have one ad set running. But what you'll find here is a lot of the times, all three on your first attempt will, um, will not be profitable. So uh, that kind of concludes uh, to this little section right here. And then obviously, if, if you're lucky enough, for all this to be a winning, still winning right here, then what we usually do is in between here and here, we will test different videos and we will test different ad copies. Um, until we get about 50, yeah, thumbnails. Yeah, good, good call. Thumbnails. Until we get around 50 purchases and then we'll move to scaling. Um, and if it's not, actually, I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor for some questions right here because this is probably a lot of information for y'all to take in. And maybe uh, I'll let Jose answer him. So I know I like talking a lot. So pull him up because my phone. Yeah. So no worries. I appreciate these trainings for sure, bro. All right, guys. So does anyone in here have? There's only five people in here watching, but does anyone in here have a question um, from how we got from here to to where we are right now? Yeah, I would have. I'll give it. 30 seconds. I was gonna speak for the pay system and how that on how like every page needs that, but uh, do you want to want to say that for like another video? No, good. All right, so the pay system basically there's four different type, types of buyers, right? And that's from from Ty Lopez. So, um, you can't pull up like um, any any uh, any Shopify like store so we can kind of explain like, okay, this is the P, this is the A. No, Brennan. Can you pull up? Oh, like we, yeah, yeah, for sure. If it'll pull up, pace system. No, like Shopify store, not the pace system. I'll put my Shopify store. Yeah, any any winning the mental box, so I can explain the pace system to them. Like, yeah, pull up the right. mental. Box. Yeah, mental box. All right. All right. So. If it's a little low, bro, I'm gonna try. All right. So my, I guess I'll just begin. So there's four different type of bars, right? There's a practical person. That person needs um, benefits and details. That's how you're going to sell that person. You're not going to sell him with buy this now, right? He needs more details about the product, more benefits about the product, 
because he's just you know that practical type of person. As far as like uh, the A, a uh, person who's very like action based, who's those are the persons going to buy like uh, get this now, limited time remaining, right? Or uh, limited time remaining, go buy now like that. A person who's social, if you have like those pop ups, this is an S. So the people who are social, you know, like if you have those pop ups that say this guy just purchased. This bridge from Fresno, California, from LA, from whatever, right? Those people are going to buy because other people are buying. They're watching like, oh, he's buying it. So I'm going to, it just, you know, it creates that, like that buying mode, right? It gets them to that buying mode. As far as emotional people, so emotional people, they buy because of timers. Like this sale is going to end in 10 minutes if you don't buy now. Exactly right there. So this is a great example of the pay system. So you got to make sure that you're marketing to the four types of, of buyers, not just one. And most people are marketing for only ease. Those are emotional people. They have a timer. Uh, buy this now. Sales going to end in 24 hours. Like you also got to get the other buyers as well. That's why a lot of people come in. And you sometimes uh, people ask them to, or they ask other people, I'm getting a lot of people to come in, but they're not buying from me. Well, it's because you're only selling to one certain person. You got to sell to the four, the four types of people there is. Um, so as far as the pay system in here, go from the top, bro. Um, very top. So you have like the timer. Those are targeting emotional people. Those people would buy with emotion. It's kind of like it kind of rushes them like, oh shit, I need to buy now. Um as far as practical people, if you go down, you're gonna see a lot of details, a lot of uh, benefits and stuff like that. And boom. Details, benefits, details, benefits, details and benefits, right? Okay, so now you have like join free for three days. Those are like that's kind of like a call to action, obviously. You have uh, testimonials. Those are people who buy because other people bought. You know, social based people, people who are very social. And then you know, the best way to figure out what type of person like you're trying to sell to them. I mean, what kind of what are they in the system? In the system, figure out what are you in the system. Like, figure out how why do you buy? Do you buy because other people are buying? Do you buy because the details, the benefits. Yeah. So one thing I see too on this page that maybe mentor docs could be doing better and maybe they could split test against is um they can sell more to the people's emotions. So you see here, it's like new way of learning. If you're like most of our members, you believe this. So when people are reading a sales page copy or anything, even your product, the question that they're asking themselves continuously is what's in it for me? People are selfish. People don't care about you or your brand. People don't care that Alex was a um, NASA scientist. Like no one cares about any of this shit, right? All they care about when they're reading this is what's in it for me. So you want to tell people that before anyone buys a product ever, they have to envision themselves with it in their hand. So I know that now when I buy a monster energy drink and I drink it, this is the experience I'm going to get. If I've never put this in my hand and drank it before, and experience that they have to tell people what they're going to experience. You need to tell them the emotions they're going to feel. You need to tell them all that stuff. And that's, that's what I see that this page is missing. If it's not really telling that. So this might be a best example, Jose, for the pay system. But, um, but yeah. Well, when you look at a, a Shopify store, like maybe even ours, the map or obsidian, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, product right. it's like trending Kings.net. Let's see how that takes them. Uh, if you look at the, Obsidian necklace, remember adding some reviews and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, boom. Click funnels or, or it can be click funnels or uh, Shopify store. They're in both. <clears throat> I got it. I got you. It's pulling up right now. Yo, what's up, Franco? So let's see if we got any more questions in here. All good. All right. So Josh has a question right here. Just wondering, would you guys be able to do product page reviews? Yeah, so that's something that will definitely be opened up. Uh, and actually, that's what we're kind of doing right now. I'm showing you that. And uh, we will. Uh... Hey, so Alex said practical, emotional, social, and he missed the fourth one. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I covered that already. I wrote it down here. So, yeah. So, just so you guys know, our click funnel conversion rates, we don't really run that much. This isn't even like, is this even live? Yet? Oh, we're doing PPE right now to this, right? Yeah, yeah. so we're running PPE campaigns to this, guys. So, you guys see a power. Of uh, of click funnels, I just showed it there. Um, this is the not split test, but it was like freaking ten percent conversion rate since we changed it and ran 
So what we do with ours is we we uh with ClickFunnels you can force products to win. So we'll we'll launch a product if it doesn't work, we'll rebrand it, we'll re- rebrand a page and rerun the PPE traffic to it. Um, and as you guys can see here, um, in the last couple of days, like in the last week, this funnel has. <clears throat> This is what the, the pay system will do. So Jose writes a copy for our sales pages, and uh, he's a freaking beast. And I don't know why it's not working now. It might be a different funnel, but it's like we have like ten percent conversion rates on our funnels. Shopify stores have like freaking three. I'm gonna go and pull this up for him. Is, is this the right one, bro? You think oh, so? Uh, I think so. If not, I just pull up the, the Shopify one. I think this might be it. Yeah, is this the far one? We're done. Oh, it's just it's lagging. Lagging. Um, go down. There is, yeah, it's this one. So, yeah, it's this one. So, this is a, almost a perfect example of the pace system. The only thing we're missing is the timer, which is the emotional type of people that we're sort of missing out. Um, so you know how we have like, what would the, what would you use? Why would you use the black obsidian? So it's like, you know, why would you use it? It's about them. It's always about them, right? So you should have a black obsidian because it's a stone of truth. You can benefit from having more truth in, in your life. It's it's about them always. So it's all right here. It's all about benefits. Benefits and details about this product and how it's going to help them uh, feel better, you know? So, um, this niche was, I, I, I dug deep into it. So what I did, I went to um, Amazon reviews. I checked out how the, I checked out like the language that people were talking about. So I got their language and I used it against them. Like, oh, I love this obsidian necklace because it helped me do this, it helped me do that. So I wrote what it helped them to do. It helps, it helps you uh, bring more truth into your life. Boom. So you kind of want to get to know your customer. You got to, you got to, you want to know what, you know, how, what they like about the product. Um, so, so those are the P's right there. I'm covering all the people who are packed. And one thing too is the one. Uh, this is another thing you'll learn. Uh, so, Alex's question here is, what training would you recommend for better copywriting? Um, go to our YouTube channel. We have the top five books you need to have. All of them are pretty much four out of five of them are related. No, three out of five, I think, are related to copywriting. Okay. Number one though is cash advertising, but we explain we explain the five books and why we have the five books. Um, yeah, but the number one most powerful word you can use in copy is you. I learned that um, from a dude who sold a hundred million dollars in fake pills. Basically, uh, it's a book called The Twelve Month Millionaire. Um, the dude he said the number one word you can use copy is you and a sales letter, because remember. The question is, what's in it for me? Well, here's what's in it for you. you. You can benefit from having more truth in your life. Like, yeah, like this is this is what's in it for you. What's in it for you? Jose's a beast of this shit. I love it. Um, so you know, love. So like, boom, what's in it for me? Like, look at this shit. Like, who doesn't want any of this right here? So black wealth and wealth. When it comes to wealth, the black and seeing is luckily something to have is because it can change bad luck to good luck. So that's what's in it for you. You're gonna change your bad luck to good luck. You're going to make more money. You're going to have more love. Like you're going to have all the things people want. So you're LF8, you know? Um, yeah. So that's, this is a perfect example of a sales page copy. Um, now, so we have more questions. Oh, real quick now, wait, you know how like more wealth It's not bullshitting. These people believe in that. So you got to sell a belief system. I just, want, I just want to let you know that. Yeah. So um, our YouTube channel. So the question I was asked is what is your, uh, What's the name of your channel? It's Ecompreneur, same as a group. Ecompreneurs. Um, we're going to be going, starting February 1st, we're going to start putting a shit ton of content on that channel, probably every day. So um, it's all, we're, we're starting to kind of launch this brand off. We want to, like, there's so many groups out there, y'all, that like they just hold back so much information from you guys. And we're like literally our first training ever. We're pulling out our business blueprint for you guys. This is shit that we train our employees with. Like this is, this is the roadmap to making money right here. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, guys, that, that's the name of the channel. Um, go ahead and drop more uh, more questions in. We're probably going to kind of fly through the rest of this training. 
And uh, drop as many questions as you can in the comments. And then at the, we're going to go ahead and wrap this training up. And we'll answer all the questions at the end. Um, and we'll kind of conclude this first training for you guys. So, um, it, so basically at, at the end of here, if it's not, if you get to this point, it's not profitable. What we're going to do is up until this whole point, if you get to this part right here, you've been using your audience that you created. Okay. You basically said like, Hey, look, I know my shit. Um, I know it good enough. So when you're doing a product, remember this too, it's 30 or 30% pro, uh, 30% product, 40% creative. Okay. So your product's 30% of your ad success. Your uh, your creative, meaning your ad copy, your video, is 40% of your ad success. And targeting's just like 30, maybe even less than that. Like targeting, anyone can do the fucking targeting. It's simple, right? Like don't ever overcomplicate targeting. That's like the number one thing people get caught up on. Like targeting is simple as shit. Like if you have, like I said, if you have a, a dog product, like you just do what I told you guys to do and target, um, you know, freaking... Bark box, you know, because your CPMs are always going to be super high when you first start off. That's the unfortunate thing. But as you get up to where we're about to go to now, what you're allowing to do is Facebook to gather data for your product. Okay. And then now we get up here. What we're doing when we get up here, we we kill everything. We start from scratch here. And what we're doing now is we're going to allow Facebook to use the information that's gathered to try to make it profitable for us. So now what we're saying is, okay, Facebook, like I couldn't do this by myself. Let me use your smart algorithm to try and make this product profitable now. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill uh, everything up to this point. We're going to, so um, we would kill the ATC, obviously, because a lot of times you run this and it won't be profitable. So uh, just ignore this if you're coming from down here. But you will make two new brand new PPE campaigns. So you're going to do the same thing that we did over here, Okay. You're gonna make you're gonna do this again, um, except for your, you're gonna be running one PP campaign, one audience, and one video. Okay, and the video is gonna be whichever one that made it all the way through. <laughs> um, so in here for our, our audience, we're going to do a we're gonna go in there. We're gonna to go to Facebook, create a custom audience for people who have viewed content on that product page. So you go to Facebook uh, audiences create audience, uh, website, uh, view content, and you would do add a URL parameter of whatever your product page is. So for example, the Obsidian Necklace, you can see we have a um, a view content on this page. So we would say we want to do a view content and then we would add in the, UR, the back end URL for whatever's on the end of our product page. So like Obsidian 50% off one, like this is our URL right here. So we would just like copy this right here and we throw it in the uh, Facebook It'll create us an audience. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make another custom audience. Go to audiences, create custom audience, page engagement, videos. And then you'll click on uh, like who people who've watched either 75 or 95% of your videos, uh, depending. So if you're going, I recommend that if you went through this phase right here, uh, do 95%. And if you don't go through that phase and you just get to right here, uh, maybe 75% might be a better audience for you, okay? Because all we're doing here, the only reason we're running this uh, campaign, most time it's not profitable, but we're just trying to build more Facebook pixel intelligence. Um, so we let these two, we make a 1% lookalike audience out of these to the United States. And the question that someone had real quick, uh, and I forgot to answer the answer to the question, it was um, what age ranges do you guys like to target? So in our targeting, I, I left this out. Our targeting, we target the United States only, and we'll. I usually do ages like 22 plus, um, most of the time, and we will do gender specific. Like if it's a necklace and it's obviously a female necklace, like we're obviously just going to target females, right? But um, so right here we're going to do we're going to make a look alike. I just want to cover that real quick because I forgot to answer that question. Um, right here we're going to make a look alike audience out of both those audiences we made. To do that, you just click on the audience. You go up to where it says actions uh, in your audiences and you say create lookalike audience, 1%, boom. If you guys don't know how to do that, just YouTube it. Um, and then you're going to let those campaigns run for 48 hours, okay? Now, after those 48 hours, uh, you're going to duplicate the view content uh, campaign regardless. So no matter what, even if it's negative, not profitable, 
you're still going to duplicate that into a lead campaign or Fusion Shopify again. You're going to do it to an add to cart campaign. Okay. Um, and if your 95% video view audience is uh, profitable, which usually is not, then you would duplicate that one into an add to cart campaign as well. But most time it's not. You're just going to kill this one off. Um, if this campaign is profitable, like I said, no matter what, if the view content is profitable, then you duplicate it. If it's not profitable, you still duplicate it. But if it is profitable, then you're going to increase the uh, the budget from $6 a day to $12 a day. Um, so then same thing here that we did. Uh, so this is kind of the same process that we did right here. Okay. So $20 a day. We let it run for 48 hours. Okay. And at this point, if it wasn't profitable, we're going to kill the ad set. You do not have a winning product. You don't want to come over here and spend another $100 and throw in the trash. But if it, if it is profitable, if, if either one of these or just the one campaign you ran for the um, for the add to cart or lead to views and funnels was profitable, then you would uh, do the same thing we did down here, which is duplicate it from a add to cart to a purchase objective campaign and make three ad sets at $40 a day. Um, yeah, I'll repeat myself, but you know, we already went over this down here. At 12 hours, we're going to kill the least underperforming um, ad set. After 24 hours, if one's profitable, one's not, we're going to leave the one running. If they're both profitable, we'll leave them both running. And if one's not prof, if they're both not profitable, then we kill it. Okay. Um, then you just wasted like $300 testing that product when you get to this point. So, and, you know, shit happens, but you don't want to keep throwing money at it if it's not profitable. Um, that's why we're so that's why we're so strict through this whole process. Uh, the only place I'm kind of lenient at, like I said, is kind of like you're right here at this section. I'll be kind of lenient. Sometimes I'm kind of lenient right here at the at 96 hours. But other than that, don't get emotionally attached to your ads because it'll end up costing you a shit ton of money. Um, so then same thing right here. If if it's profitable, in between here, we're testing videos, we're testing ad copies, we're we're trying to get our click-through rate higher. Okay, we're trying to get our click-through rate higher. Our, our cost per click's lower. Uh, that's what raising your click uh, click through rate will do. Um, we're testing videos, ad copies, and thumbnails. thumbnails so then we, yep, then we move to our, our scaling section. So if you got to here, especially if you get to right here, you're going to make some money. Uh, if you get to right here, you're going to make some money. We always like do it as a mini scale. This is always our mini scale before we do that. And some people will ask too, I'm going to cover this, is why do you do this three times? And the answer to that is because Facebook is random as fuck, okay? Like, Facebook will let one of these be profitable and one of them not be. Why is that? I don't know. But we found that <clears throat> uh, we used to do, before Facebook kind of put it into it, is when we had a winning campaign, we could just duplicate that shit like 10, 20 times. And what we found by doing that was 20% of those campaigns would always be profitable. It's like the 80-20 it's, it's the rule. Where twenty percent were always profitable, we would kill the other eight and let those campaigns run out over time. Um, so that, that's that's how we used to scale back, like even a year ago. That's how we were scaling campaigns and making a lot of money um, with digital products and stuff like that. Now that really doesn't work too well, but you can definitely do that at this level. Just doing three of them, uh, we found it to be pretty effective and not spending too much money because you know you can do this if you want to. You can do this times ten or, you know, times five, but we do times three. It's what we do. You can do what you want to do. Um, this is just what, like I said, what we found has worked best. Um, but obviously we've had more experience on, you know, this side of the chart that we have over here, obviously. So, yeah, we get this point. You can, you know, try whatever you want to do. We just try to stay as lean as possible. Our, our goal here was we were spending like one to $2,000 testing each product. And we're like, fuck, this is a lot of money we're spending. And we brought that down to around three to four hundred dollars by the time you get through here. So we've like significantly decreased our testing budget uh, by doing this method, and it's worked just as well for us, if not better. So um, yeah. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this thing up to any questions you guys had about this training, and we're gonna call it a night. So this guy said, "Hold up, I forgot what question." He said it went away. Okay, we got a uh, what training? So, what's the name of your channel? We already answered that. Do you pull folks from? Here we go. Let me put this up. 
do you pull folks from FB to landing page or to a multi-product website? Alex, so we use ClickFunnels inside our business. We only, I haven't drove traffic to Shopify since October. Um, I only drive traffic to, to ClickFunnels. Um, and there, I can show you the reason why. I'll actually come into our funnels real quick. And I'll show you the exact funnel that we used inside of our course that we made for ClickFunnels. Um, cause we guys like, we actually take a product, we build the, we build the page for you. We, uh, we scale it. Like we, we scale it out for you guys. Like we spend, we're still doing it right now, actually, but we've already spent like a thousand dollars on ads, um, in our testing phase for you guys here. So like, it wasn't not a winning product. We actually forced this product to become a winning product. Mm-hmm. So one thing that you'll find too, is we, we don't try to sell econ products as much as we try to sell continuity membership programs. And that's what makes us all of our money in our econ business. So we can break money or even lose money sometimes on the front end of the, of the product. And we'll make our money back because this 661 right here, you guys see, that's recurring monthly revenue for our business. Um, but you can see here on the funnel that when people come to our page, now remember the standard for ecom is around a 3% conversion rate, which even you guys know as probably being Shopify store owners, that 3% is like top dog. Um, we're over here getting an average of 7% conversion rate on a non-winning product. We get we get 10 to 12% conversion rates on other products. Um, we are um, getting 18% of people's information. We have other funnels where we've gotten 60% of people's information, meaning we're getting people's first names, last names, email addresses, phone numbers, <laughs> everything uh, that come to our page. And I can actually show you so this funnel is obviously optimized a lot better um, in the last probably couple of days. So if I come over here to like a, a four day overview, I can show you guys kind of what we're, we're talking about. This will load up. Boom, boom. Yeah, so you can see here we're earning $2.34 per click. So, so you're paying uh, 50 cents per click. You're making pretty much, you know, <laughs> almost $2 per visitor that comes to your site. Our average cart value is insane. Um, I'm going to pull this up. So you can see we're up to an 8% conversion right now in this funnel. We're getting 22% of people's information. Um, and this works. It's a real a trick you guys can use right here when you guys do funnels. If you can do buy two, get one free. So I don't want people want three globe necklaces. Three gold necklaces, but they do. <laughs> and you see 60% of people buy the buy two, get one free. It's really powerful for us. Um, and then you can see of that, almost 40% of people enroll into our continuity program, which we will go into that. That's that's number one. That's the biggest thing that we can go over for you guys. Uh, we'll definitely go over that probably next week for you guys. Um, structuring your continuity program. We actually have one that we can refer you guys to. Um, we're kind of putting all that together for you guys in the background right now, but uh, you can see 34, 37% of people enroll into our monthly subscription. So this is $505 that we're making each and every month from these customers. Um, and obviously we have our upsells. You can see 18% of people are taking your upsells, 13% of people are taking our upsells, which brings our cart value up on a $12 necklace to almost $40. It's insane. So yeah, to answer that question, we use landing pages. We use ClickFunnels. Um, this ClickFunnels is a no-brainer. So uh, let's see what else we got here. So Joshua says the email scraping software, please. Yeah, Josh, we will drop a link to that um, after after this whole thing wraps up. We'll drop we'll uh, we'll edit this post and we'll drop all the links. I'll put a link to the YouTube video I was talking about. I'll put a link to the um, software to the uh, video editing software, all that stuff for you guys. Jose, I'll let you answer this one. So what is the minimum minimum views at 95% to create a lookalike audience? Uh, I like doing anything above 5K. 5K views. Okay. Yep. So that's good. Um, so Facebook's definition on that is 1,000 to, 1, to 50,000 people is what you want to have. Um, we, you know, I'll even run, I'll even make a look like when it gets like the three, the 400, but 500, 5,000 K is optimal. So um, that's why when we said, when you get to this point right here, 
Uh, sometimes we'll go 95%. So we get over here. Sometimes we'll go 95%. Sometimes we'll go 75%. Sometimes we'll even drop down to 50%. But I would say, you know, we would say, I'll say like at least have 500. What would you say, Jose, like right here to have at least have? Maybe like a thousand. I'll probably go for a thousand. So if you're 95% has a thousand, cool. If it doesn't go down to 75%, then go down to 50%. That diagram is gold. You damn right it's gold, bro. What was your biggest what was your biggest ROI product? Um our biggest ROI product. Oh well, we're still running it, bro, so I can't tell you that. Um, uh, are you guys going to use affiliates for your course? Uh Alex, yes, we, we will be using affiliates for our course. Um and our course will be we will be dropping on uh February first too for the for the click funnels. However, we're we will continue to do free uh, trainings every each and every week inside this uh, inside of this group for you guys. So um, it's creating multiple Facebook ad accounts to run ads needed. Yes, eventually. Okay, so I think we answered all those questions there. Is one enough? So yeah, we like to. We personally have like I don't know, probably twenty different ad accounts. I have four hundred ad accounts in my Facebook, but we use about twenty of them. Right? Yeah, if we use about twenty of them right now. So uh, we usually try to use one ad account per winning product because if you guys see here, we, we use one account for pretty much just testing. Uh, but as you guys will see, I'm going to kind of zoom out of this map. Um, you know, each one of these are ad sets, okay? <laughs> each one of these are different ad sets we run. Um, if you come into – we had a map that we were running that's no longer profitable, but I'll come in here and show you guys uh, – so we use TK1 for the map, and we probably only created, like, I would say five. So you can see right here, we've had 73 campaigns we've ran, and probably 65 of those were for the map. So we ended up running 65 campaigns. We ended up making around um, $50,000 with the map. Um, and I think we had, like, 273 ad, uh, ad sets that we ended up making with the map. So when you get to that kind of a large level, it, if you run like multiple products in each ad account, it gets super confusing. We actually will, when we get to a large enough scale, if the um, if the if the actual product is profitable, and it's not gonna load for me, if the actual ad is or the product is profitable enough, you can actually split test ad accounts. But I get super advanced, and we get into that into our course. We try to save kind of all the advanced stuff for the course because once you get to that kind of level, we can't. You know, since we don't offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, that's what we figure we made the course for. Is instead, you know, instead of spending, you know, ten thousand dollars, five to five ten thousand dollars a month on coaching with us, um, you know, you you can just pay for the course one time, and boom, you have unlimited access to everything we know. And then we'll have a private group for the course as well. And when you guys have questions, instead of just answering them in the course, like you guys might have seen in previous courses you guys have been in, we're actually going to like record new content specifically for you, and put it into the course. So that way people in the future don't have questions that you had. What software do you use to manage 400 accounts? Facebook. <laughs> I use Facebook, bro. We don't use any crazy softwares. I think they want to know. There are some softwares you can use, but um, yeah, you don't need 400 accounts. I think the question was how to get access to that. Is that that's what you probably meant, I'm assuming. Oh, what? Um, yeah, so what happens is when you make like five ad accounts, they'll bump you up to like 20 or 40, I think. And then, so you have to ask for permission. You have to like go into like Facebook chat, like just Google Facebook ads chat, and then you should be able to chat with the Facebook ads team. Be like, hey, I only have five ad accounts. Make sure you guys always make your payments. Don't like go to them if you're like <laughs> negative accounts or whatever. But as long as you pay your bills, um, they'll, they'll grant you access to more accounts. And the best thing to say is that you're an ad account agency and you need to make multiple ad accounts for your clients. And at that point, they'll give you like 20 or 40. And then what you do is you immediately make all those ad accounts, name them, uh, go back to them like two weeks later and say, hey, I need more ad accounts. I got more clients in. And then like I have 800 ad accounts right now. 
I think, but we have like 400 active ad accounts. All right, so we're going to leave this open for about another like two minutes unless we get any more questions in. And uh, we're going to go ahead and kill the stream and conclude our first training, man. Hopefully this uh, helps you guys out. And, uh, you know, please, please post results. Please post questions you guys have about this process. I want to see you guys winning out there. We want to see you guys, you know, taking some screenshots of your first winning uh, ad campaigns um, next week. So, you know, immediately implement this shit. Like when you guys learn something, the best thing you can do is like, it's 10, it's 20, it's 10, uh, 20 where I'm at, where Jose's at at seven o'clock. Like y'all have time to go and do this right now. <laughs> like go do it right now. Start your ads at midnight tonight. Uh, post the results into the group. We'll see what you yeah. guys, see what kind of results you guys get. Yeah. Post them, man. I want to see you guys taking action. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> so I'm not seeing, like I said, we're going to like another 30, I know we're on a 30 second time delay. So I'm going to give it another 30 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and close this thing out, y'all. Many thanks. Yo, Alex, for sure, man. For sure. You're very welcome. All right, y'all. Well, this is going to conclude the stream. Uh, for now, Brandon out. Peace. And broadcast this shit. It's a little...